Hello, Loveland Magazine readers, Cassie Mattia here, and we are here for another episode of the Table of Discussions. Now, this episode is once again a very, very special episode where we are still advocating and educating our community. This month, it is Mental Health Awareness. So, as you guys know, this is a very, very important topic, especially since COVID, as you all could probably attest to. We all went through a lot through COVID, but even previous to that, um, this has been something that has been really making its name throughout the country. So um, I, I really want to hit on it. And to do that, I had to invite um, three of the best advocates we have here in Loveland. Um, so today we have Ellie Steinbrunner. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Heck yes. I'm on it. <laughs> we have Gina Merrick, right? That's right. Yes. I did it again. <laughs> awesome. And then we have Tori Morrison. Yeah. So, guys, I just want to dive right into it. Um, but how I want to do that is hit you all with the fact, because that's what I like to do. Um, one of the facts that I read on National Alliance on Mental Health, one in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for people aged 10 to 34. I mean, you just got to sit in silence for a second and let that let that sink in. So uh, what I want to do, ladies, is I want to touch on your stories because all of you are a part of huge organizations in Loveland. Some you have started yourselves, which is unreal. So Ellie, I, I do want to start with you, okay? So you're the young one in the crowd. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just because you're young, that doesn't mean you can't be an advocate and educate. So yeah. Ellie here is a part of the Hope Squad, right? Which is at Loveland High School. Um, I want to talk about the Hope Squad and how you got involved and why. So the Hope Squad is um, uses the facility advisors, right? And trusted peers to identify students at risk for suicidal ideation and behavior and ultimately to save lives. So I love that. So Tell me when it started at Loveland and why you got involved. So it started at Loveland when I was in eighth grade, so 2018, 2019 year. And it's more like you don't t really get the choice to just join the group like most clubs at the high school. You're nominated by your peers. So you fill out a Google form and it's asked as like who are three people that you know you could go to if you were struggling with anything and then they pick the people who have the most responses that's a, so that's a neat way of doing it so with that form um now is that something that's kind of kept behind closed doors like are people telling their stories on that form nominations how does that work so the nomination part is really just if you could go to anyone, who would you go to? Gotcha. Okay. And it used to be that the people who were nominated in middle school just carried over to the high school. Right. And then I was the last year that actually did that because we kind of realized that your friend groups change in the high school, your personalities change when you become older. So we started um, re electing people just right. because things happen, people change. And we just wanted to make sure that we had the best people on the squad that we could as the years went by. And that and, and that that's great to even do that at your age, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, another fact, right? One in six U.S. youth age 6 to 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. Whew. And the, the one thing that got me, and which is why I appreciate what you're doing, 50% of all lifetime mental illnesses begin by age 14. Like... I mean, and you sit there and you wonder about your kids, right? And you have people like you advocating for that. So I do appreciate you. But I do want to dive more into your story. So why? Why mental health awareness? Why are you spreading it? And did something happen that made you just so passionate about this that you wanted to, you know, get other kids and teenagers involved? Um, so when I did become involved in eighth grade, it was a different time. Like, I feel like, like you're, I think that, the worst that people experience is more in high school so you're you're like going through puberty you're with all your friends people are mean in high school and so in eighth grade I just kind of went into it like yeah I want to make someone's day like this would be great and then when I started to go up into high school I became a lot more passionate about it and just realized that like there was some things that happened with peers of mine that I helped with and referred them to um, our adult mentors. And 
you just like kind of sit back and think like like you could have like saved someone's life like it's crazy like and I'm sure you've saved people's lives I, I guarantee you have and and that and that that's another thing you know it, it doesn't matter if you personally have a mental health issue right that doesn't matter you're the perfect person to go and advocate for people that do have it right because you're there to be that shoulder right to lean on so and so that that just wants wants to make me kind of dive into your, your story um so the, the the ben morrison foundation yes i want to talk all about it right um okay. <laughs> so so tell me how that foundation started and, and talk about ben and you know how his spirit is currently living on through what you're doing so we um our lives forever changed in 2021 um, when I got that phone call that Ben had hurt himself. And sitting at the hospital, I just remember looking at my family and saying, I can't be quiet about this. Um, I remember vividly just like wanting to hold up a picture of Ben and go to every kid and say, if this can happen to him, it can happen to you. Um, to every parent and say, if this can happen to Ben, it can happen to one of your kids. Um, ben was two sports, three-time varsity in both of them, um, plenty of friends, parents that had been together since we were 15, a loving older sister, two older sisters, three nieces and nephew. Um, he would have told you I was over-involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, not, you know, parents that didn't show up that weren't there for him. And so it just really shocked me and when I found out how much it shocked the community, it kind of, in a, some way, gave me a little bit of peace because I realized that it wasn't just me that didn't see it, nobody saw it. And I just said, I, I, I can't be quiet. And so it really just started with, we gave out three scholarships that year. Because you know, as a parent- Was it to Loveland High School? It was okay. to Loveland, okay. yeah. As a parent, you want your child's name to continue. Yeah. And the only way that we could come up with immediately for that to happen was to give out a scholarship in his name. Right, right. So it started that first year. Within like two months, we gave out three scholarships. Right. And then it became, well, how can we fund the scholarships? So then we started having events to fund the scholarships because, you know, you have to do that. And then it became, now we have so much money, what are we going to do with it more than scholarships? Right. And, um... It took about a year for me to figure out what that was. I connected with Gina, who you'll talk to in a minute, and um, saw what she was doing and just really wanted to be that person for someone else that she was for me, right. that helped me. Right, right. And so when I found out about it at another school, I was able to contact that parent. And so we organized the first ever mental health football game in the fall. That's and, awesome. Um, I think Ellie could tell you it was just magical. It was. I mean, a, it a was, memorable moment it for was, you. Yeah. It it was. I've never seen an event where two schools really came together like that. Neither school wore their orange and black because we were playing Anderson. Right. Everyone was in the teal and purple. Wow. And it was just amazing. And you know what? He was 19. Is that correct? That's correct. So. And that's why I segued because he was still kind of coming out of the, the high school situation. But the reason I segued into that is because you were talking about, right, the stereotypical, like, you know, if somebody's struggling with mental health, what are the stereotypical, you know, symptoms or things you notice? That? No. So that, that makes even more, you need to be more aware. You need to pay attention to your kid more, right? Because it might not be the stereotypical things that people were talking about, right? So. No. And I think it's especially harder with boys. Correct. Because yep. they're quieter anyway. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, you read these things, they they go into their room all the time and they're, you know, they're dis disconnected. Well, that's a boy. Right. For the most case. Right. You know? Right. Right. Um, he still interacted with his friends. He played video games with them every night. He still did things with them. It was just well, and, and I and I also want to say too, her memorial fund, I mean it, it does more than what you're even talking about, and I love it. I went on the website. There's a website. There's events happening all the time. So really, you know, the mission statement. You know I love mission statements. That's my thing. I love it. So this, the Ben Morrison Memorial Fund is committed to providing scholarships to graduating seniors from Loveland High School, which we touched on. This is what I like. 
We are dedicated to erasing the stigma of mental health struggles, opening conversations, and offering lifelines to help save lives of young people in crisis. I love that. Thank you. I mean, that's mission statements mean a lot, right? You could you could go to any organization and maybe they're just doing it just for just to do it right. But when you see a mission statement like that and then hear a story like that, it really hits home. And that's when I kind of want to dive into Gina. So we're talking about social media, right? Mental health, um, that stigma. Well, guess what? You played on that. Let me help by using social media, by using apps, and maybe I can get, you know, people like Ellie, people, you know, like Ben on board, right? So let, let's let's dive into your story about my Fave Five app. Um, why did you start it? And obviously I know what it is because we had an intern write about you <laughs> last year, Olivia, roll, unreal story. Um, and that's when I got really inspired by you. So let's talk about why you started my Fave Five app, what it is, and then we'll kind of dive into like the different levels, right? Because you because you kind of had a journey. Mm -hmm. So um, let, let's talk about that, Gina. Sure. So 2016, uh, my son Jacob was 15 and he, mm. he took his life. We, similar to Tori's story, we had no signs that he was struggling. Um, always had a smile on his face and, a, you know, a happy, you know, young man, Boy Scout, trumpet player. So when that happened, it, I mean, it really rocked our world and it, it broke us apart. And I asked my younger son at the time, who was 12, something's bothering you. Who would you call? And he said, I don't know. Mm. And it was at that point we said, you know, you need to know. And even if it's about dad and I, you need to talk. Right. And so, you know, 2016, from then until we're, where we are now, the amount of discussions about mental health, the amount of conversations happening has been amazing. And so it's great to see that. But I started really on paper, just getting young adults, teenagers, to identify five people and then that evolved into the app thanks to Southwest Ohio Give Camp did awarded me that. So our awesome. first app was for teenagers uh -huh. to reach out to adults. And then as we were going through COVID, realized everybody needed their network of support. Right. So really rebranded that in 22 to a mental wellness tool and really being able now to go to universities, go to veteran groups, you know, I look at the Hope Squad members, and I've spoke to the Hope Squad groups about who are their five mm. that they can talk to. Um, but we all need our network of support. So really encouraging people to figure out who in their life they could talk to. And that's not an easy exercise to do. No, not at all. And, and nowadays, you know, the old way of doing stuff like this is you have a phone book, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is very accessible. Um, even to... so. To go back on what I do, people with developmental disabilities, this is huge too for them. And having things that are accessible, technology is great. So I appreciate you for doing that because mental health for people that I work with, are, it's hard because mm -hmm. some of them aren't verbal. Some of them, you know, can't can't do a whole lot on their own. So I, I really appreciate that. Now, this app is available on Google Play and the App Store. Yes. Um, the other thing I, I like is that, you know, just what you said, 2016, simple worksheet. 2019, a mobile app for teens, and then 2022, you get this app on Google Play. That's really, really cool. But what I want to kind of discuss with all of you is let the community know what are some signs that you want to look for when you're dealing with a non-stereotypical mental health situation? What what are things that from your experience, in your experience, because you're you're in it, you're in the thick of it right now, I have siblings in high school and it's not good right now. It's not good. It's bad because of social media, all the things that are out there, people comparing one another, you know, people putting on these facades that they have these great lives on social media and, you know, behind closed doors, maybe that's not, not the case. So, and, and you guys can kind of tag team, kind of talk to me about what, what can the community look for? How, how can we prevent the community from going through what you, what you guys have been through? And I know that's a tough question. It's loaded, but I, I, I want to hear your guys' op opinions on this. It's really difficult for me, and Gina and I have talked about this, when as a parent we didn't have any signs. Right. It's hard for me to talk about the signs because I say the signs didn't do me any good. Right. I mean, right. I knew what the signs were back in the day. Right. I mean, right. But they didn't do me any good. My biggest thing is if your child says something, you need to take it seriously. I think that too many times parents say, 
They're just being dramatic. Mm. They're just looking for attention. And I think that we need to take it very seriously. If your child or your friend or whoever says, you know, I really hate my life. I'm not, you know, happy. I just shouldn't be here anymore. You know, mm -hmm. any of these kinds of phrases, you need to take that seriously. And in the long run, if your friend gets mad at you because you told on them, I'm sorry, you might have saved their life. You're you're correct. Um, I will say one of the biggest things um, that I've noticed with mental health, and I'm sure you guys can attest to this, it's kind of cultural. So my family's Italian, very Italian, Catholics. So sometimes when I, and sorry family, I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> Sometimes when I say I have anxiety or, you know, I just started medication or whatever, it's like, ah, oh, you're good. You're good. So in your opinions, how can someone like me, you know, appropriately and effectively explain that it is real and that it's okay to be on medication? Um, how, how do you explain that to a family member, somebody that's just against counseling, against medication, you know, against being open and candid about mental illness? Yeah, I... That's a hard question because we're not no, mental we health. We're not yeah, yeah, of course, of course, experts. of course. Um, but I think in the setting, as we're starting to talk more, I think the key is just education, right? And being able to share what's happening, the facts that you presented. Um, I think we're getting better at right. being open with conversations about mental health, but I still think we have a ways to go, right? And you know, I use simple examples of developing healthy coping skills. So with young adults, especially athletes, I say call one of your five after every game and tell them how oh, great you played. Good idea. Because that day may come where you're sitting on the bench and you're saying, I'm kind of bummed. And that may be a natural conversation to have. But it's those healthy coping skills. Same thing, you're graduating. You know, everyone's saying, oh, call me if you need anything. Right. It's like, make that real with these young adults heading off to college. What a very stressful time to go to college. But right. I think the, it starts, you know, it starts at home. It starts within the friend group to say, I'm here for you. And if you ever need to talk about anything at any time, call me. I wanted to add to, I feel like, like, like a lot of our group's missions are to end the stigma against mental health because it's very societal and sometimes cultural that you just kind of look at it like, what do you mean? Like, you're fine. Yeah. 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 So I don't think that it's really easy for one individual to look at their parents and if they're so against that to just have them completely understand right away. So I do think it's a whole process of like all of these groups together ending the stigma and it's not going to be something that's fixed just overnight. It's going right. to take a lot of time. Right. Good 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 feedback on that because it is a it is a conversation that's tough and you know one of one of the biggest uh, demographics uh 50% of um, individuals that deal with mental health is uh, the, the gay bisexual community. Um, and and I, know, I know I've seen that through my community, colleges, high schools, they're dealing with a lot. Um, you know, 19% of individuals have anxiety disorders, right? So we're all kind of dealing with different things. So how I kind of want to wrap this up is I want each of you to tell the community how they can get involved with your organizations. And then if you have any resources that you would like to to touch on or if you have any uh, events coming up because I know uh, the Ben Morrison Foundation you guys have events yeah, so we do. <laughs> um, I love that so um, we'll start with you and then we'll okay. just we'll just go down the line and kind of talk about that okay so you can learn more about us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and the Ben Morrison fund org we um, really promote calling 988 if you have an issue and for those of you who are not aware um, last year they did away with the 1-800 number. I think it's still there. I shouldn't have said they did away. Um, but you can now just call 988, like, much like you can do 911. And you will be connected with a licensed therapist to help you and assess where you are and if you need additional help or you just need someone to talk to at that moment. So we really promote that because that is a all-inclusive. Right, right. There are many. Uh, you touched on NAMI. Mm. There's the National Institute for Health. Um, there's many other avenues out there. I list, I have a page on my website of resources. On the Ben Morrison? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Any of them, you can click the little icon and it'll take you directly to their site. Okay. And we will include all of your links 
in our in our story as well the app link uh hope squad and then of course your foundation as well um is there any events coming up for you so our big one come well we have a fun run in june june 10th and where's that at so that starts at narrow path and ends at narrow path awesome <laughs> love it so it involves alcohol but <laughs> <laughs> hey you know <laughs> um my friend chris owens started this a couple years ago okay uh she does a couple of them a year for different organizations and she blessed us by doing one for us the hope squad will be there um, Heck yeah you know and it's just a fun event families are there and you um, register online or no registration required there's no money required oh, great. Okay. it's all donation what people want so to show give. up just show up Love and it. have fun you'll hear some stories from some hope squad kids um, and then our big event is always the first Sunday in August, our golf outing. Oh yeah. Yep. And, and I've already seen one. that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we'll, we'll of course promote that as well. Yeah. Um, Ellie, what about you? So yeah, I know you said, you know, the nominating, the forms and whatnot, but if, if somebody's kind of scared, you know, yeah. how can they go about kind of contacting the Hope Squad and, you know, getting involved? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who contact us directly are students who mm -hmm. need help. So we realize that sometimes people aren't going to be like very open about it just oh, because yeah. there is a stigma around mental health. So around the high school, we have QR codes hanging up in the bathroom and the stalls. So if you're feeling uncomfortable going right up to someone or like publicly, publicly doing it, you can scan that QR code or we also have a Google form on our website as well. We have a Google site for the like high school Loveland website or the high, okay. for Loveland Hope cool, Squad. Cool. Okay. You, it's connected, I think, through our Loveland school counseling site. Okay. We'll, we'll add that link to it. hundred percent sure. Okay. <laughs> we'll find it. <laughs> um, but there's some good resources on that Loveland Hope Squad site as well. And you can, um, be referred to a Hope Squad member or one of our advisors. Okay. Um, and then I do always like to promote 988 too, because a lot of people who struggle, struggle in silence. Mm. They they don't want to show signs. They don't want to talk about it. So I think it's great that 988 is a three-digit number. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. everybody knows about it now. Yep. It's been promoted so well. So if you're sitting in your bedroom at night and you need help and you don't want to talk about it to people, you can call 988 and they're a great resource for you. And, and I want to ask too, and this is just because uh, I'm curious, you just graduated. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do with your life? Cause you're you're killing it. Like your advocacy. I'm serious. At a young age, like, what are you going to school? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to Ohio State this fall. Okay. And I don't really have anything planned yet. But Will you go into the mental health? I mean, who knows? Not currently. I'm doing like a chemical engineering field as mm. of now. So you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> anything I do, I definitely want to be. A promoter for mental health. That's I think awesome. everyone should have resources. I think it's great that Hope Squad has kind of like a curriculum that you learn. So mm -hmm. you learn warning signs, you learn that it's going to be different for everyone. But the biggest thing is like, you're going to, it's going to be shown to peers more than parents, right. which sucks, but it's just usually what people do. And, um, it's going to be like drastic changes in mood. So, right, right. Or like on private social media stories, so right. not everyone can see it. Right. So, yeah, I definitely think it's great to get the word out about mental health and I'll continue to do that. At, o at OSU? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll look for you. <laughs> and then, uh, so t talk to me a little bit about, I know obviously Google Play App Store, but tell me how people can get more involved. And if they don't understand the app, can they contact you and you can help out or... Yes, yeah, so pretty easy. They can go to my website at myfaith5.org for more information about the app, about my story. Um, the app is available on Google Play and uh, the App Store. And I would say, you know, what I would encourage viewers to do, especially in, you know, at this time of year, is to offer to be someone's faith. Mm. So it's not so much of me you know, as the user asking someone, right. but, you know, as people have family members or friends, uh, young adults heading off to college, heading off to new careers, just say, I'll be there for you and to ask them to put them in as one of their faves. Um, we are enhancing the app to add mindfulness activities within Ooh. it. Uh, we did an exercise, really a whole semester long project with NKU um, one of the marketing classes and some some of their feedbacks going to get incorporated into the app. That's awesome. And continuing to 
you know, promote the fact that it's important that all of us have our network of support. So as you head to college and take who you're taking with you, that's going to be there. Those people you could call and say, you know, this is a new school, a new environment. I'm lonely. Right. Uh, be able just to express yourself. So we continue to promote. I think this coming year we will, my faith five will continue to partner with Ben Morrison Fund and yeah. the 988 initiative. Our hope is to um, expand the number of mental health games. And we talk to parents. We talk to students at those games. We're just there to continue to raise awareness more than anything oh, and, and to bring, uh, bring focus to the importance of uh, developing those coping skills. And, the, and I would say for me, education comes a lot more, I don't know, just it, it comes better to me when it's from someone that's experienced it. So that, that, I mean, coming from you guys, it really means a lot. And so I, I found this hashtag and it's kind of like the hashtag of Mental Health Awareness Month. And so I, I do want to leave you guys with this. So it's hashtag more than enough. And it means you are inherently worthy of life, love, and healing. So if we could spread that hashtag, hashtag more than enough, and just because it's May and it's the end of May soon, that doesn't matter. Let's keep on, let's keep it on. Let's do it through June, July, August. So hashtag more than enough, you are inherently worthy of life, love, and healing. So let's all leave here with that. I'm sure you guys already think about that anyways. But is there, and I always do this, is there anything else that you guys want to say to the community, the Loveland community? Anything at all? you know, about mental health, um, about maybe a thought you want to leave people with or just anything at all before we sign out? I would say, you know, the Loveland community is an amazing community. I mean, we have great, you know, resources. Um, I think it's just express kindness. Just be kind. I know people are stressed. I know people have things going on, but, you know, just encourage kindness. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm... I would agree with everything Gina just said, um, but I would also personally just thank the Loveland community because they have been so accepting of my family and the mission that I have started and just supported me in everything that I have tried to do. Um, I don't give them a choice, I make them. <laughs> but, but no, they have been wonderful and I couldn't ask for a better community to be in. Mm -hmm. Love it. What about you, Ellie? Um, I would say don't be afraid to put yourself first sometimes and get the help you need if it's needed. Ooh, a one-liner. Okay, okay, hit him with the one-liner. All right, Loveland. Well, you, you heard it here. We got, we got the best advocates in Loveland right here. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll include links to the mental health resources as well as the organizations that these ladies are uh, currently in. Um, like I said, we're all here for you guys. We are Loveland Magazine's here. Reach out anytime. You know our emails are on on the website as well. I don't care if you want to talk to me about it. Let's talk. So um, we're all here spreading kindness and love. Right, guys? Yes. yes. All right, Loveland. Well, we appreciate you being here, and we'll see you for the next episode. See you later.